this world history. Hmm. Not much in here, at least so far. Is this oh shot glasses. Well, that's one place to put it. Dear Mr. Greenbrier, I write to inform you that unfortunately Mercury Books will be unable to publish your follow-up to The Accidental Pariah. Despite the low sales of The Accidental Savior, we went ahead with publication of the second book in hopes of the John Russell, Russell series catching on. However, sales of the second book have in fact been lower than those of the first, and so our stewardship of the series must end here. It's been a pleasure working as your publisher, and we wish you and John Russell the best in your future endeavors. Hmm. All right. And by the alcohol, so he's been drinking about losing out on his pop. Do you guys hear anything? Hmm. Thought I heard something. It's a lot of music. Samantha, please give this to your mother. Janice, thank you for having Danny over to your new home. He's missed having his friend Samantha in the neighborhood very much. Danny asked if he could lend Samantha his Nintendo Street Fighting tape, and I gave him perm or gave my permission. He needs to spend less time with those games anyway. No hurry returning it. Let Samantha know that she's welcome back to our house to visit any time. When you live in one place your whole life... Your next door neighbor is kind of like your default friend. And Daniel only got weirder over the years. So moving away has been a good excuse to, like, not see him anymore. But he did always have the good Nintendo games. Maybe I'll give him a call. Katie, please tell Mom and Dad sorry about the stuff that's missing. Okay. Missing from what? Hey Lonnie, or hi Lonnie. So if you wanted to come over to my house still this afternoon, that would be cool. I can drive, it's kind of far, but I can drive you home too, so hopefully that's fine. Right back and leave this in my locker if you still want to, and we can meet in the parking lot after six. Samantha. Yeah, I'm totally in. See you there. Then I'm going to kick your butt. Get ready. So you know what they say about the best laid plans of mice and men? Yeah, it turns out it applies to Street Fighter 2. <laughs> at least I worked up the courage to walk into the 7-Eleven and ask for a turn, but all that practice at home did not exactly translate in the wild. So after I was finished getting my butt kicked, I followed them outside while they smoked. And that was when she asked me if I was that psycho house girl. But then she said she's always really wanted to see the Psycho House. Her name is Lonnie. She's coming over tomorrow. Alright, well, looks like there's no key here. As far as I can tell. So we're gonna have to keep looking for the key. It might be just in the other direction. It's definitely locked. I haven't seen anything so far, and I've been looking pretty closely for all kinds of things. So, so far, I believe this side is cleared. Oh, and there's a whole nother upstairs, too. Got that. Just need to check over here, I guess. We can try the upstairs as well as the locked door. Dia de los Muertes. Regional Track and Field Finals, 1990, 100 meter relay, Caitlin. Girls Long Jump. Those are the two events I was good at. Only Bible? Nothing here. Nothing here. I thought that was a key, but it's just the 
the fob on the door. Same kind of junk. Looks like they have got a couple. Oh, couple. Uh, can I not open that side? That's fine. There's probably nothing in it, anyways. Dear Jan, it's so good to hear from you again. All this new house business sounds like quite the adventure. Remember the little dorm room we shared freshman year when we were miserable fantasizing about our dream homes? I always said I wanted a mansion. You said you just wanted a house in the woods. Look who got both. Somebody up there likes you. I could use some of that magic. Send me some lotto numbers. I'll play them, seriously. But I shouldn't be complaining about this good old split level we've had since Bob got transferred to Winnipeg. We just got new vinyl siding. Jealous yet? Let me know if you ever want to trade places. So how are the girls doing? Has Katie left on her big European adventure yet? Speaking of jealous, right back soon. I miss you, Rumi. Carol. Hmm. My mom's old Rumi, it looks like. It's locked too. Interesting. So, gonna have to check out the upstairs, I guess. Unless I'm really missing something. Paper. Controlled burn scheduled for Boone County. Hmm. In addition to removing dead and overgrown vegetation that can lead to wildfires, the operation will serve as valuable training tool for the forestry and firefighting personnel involved Janice, which is my mom it sounds like. Home. Personal calendar. Couples bowling, cooking class, take apron, ballroom dancing. Couples bowling, cooking class, ballroom dancing. This couples bowling happened. Ballroom dancing looks like that got crossed out. Same couples, ballroom dancing, couples. Yeah, cooking class, no ballroom dancing. Cooking class, ballroom dancing. Cook the big meal. Or Carrie and or Terry and Sam. So cooking class happened. It looks like that's about it. Notice of temporary personnel transfer to aid in the upcoming prescribed burn operation. A ranger with expertise in the procedure is being transferred to the station. Please see attached personnel file. The overseeing officer, senior conservationist Janice Greenbrier, is charged with the supervision of transferred personnel. The dur duration of transfer will be based upon performance evaluation as well as the recommendation of the overseeing officer. Signed, Bruce. So, should to supervise somebody. Don't know whom. She had to supervise somebody. Ratmobile, potty mouth. Oh! For Sam. Love thing, stab, cherry bomb, throw away. Hmm. It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? I don't know. But being around Lonnie is like instantly just right. I gave her the grand Psycho House tour and took my revenge on Super Nintendo. And it was like, I don't know, I finally found someone I feel normal around. I drove her home and she gave me this tape and said, you have got to listen to this. I haven't stopped playing it since. Alright. <laughs> Sam, stop leaving every damn light in the house on. You're as bad as your sister. Yeah, I'm pretty bad. I'm leaving all the lights on. And it says, Daniel called. Daniel called again. He wants his Nintendo game back. To whom it may concern, I, Samantha Greenbrier, am 17 years old and am therefore an independent, fully functional human being. The fact that you still forbid me from going into the city on my own is frankly absurd. Compared with Katie, who's only three years older than me and yet allowed, yet you allowed her to go all the way across an ocean to another continent on her own. I just want to spend an evening in a normal, totally safe city on my own like a human being and since you may also remember that I have my own car now, you can't really stop me. Warmest regards, your daughter, Samantha. Not the best way to deal with parents, but you can try. Please 
Read the clipping. Sam, I think the creative writing track would be perfect for you. Summer pre-college program for young scholars. English creative writing. Beyond the benefits of the program itself, three students from each track will be offered a full scholarship for their first year at Reed. That definitely sounds promising. A lot of three ring binders with nothing in them. No drawer. Goodfellow High School Disciplinary Referral. Mr. Benchley observed Miss DeSoto wearing a t-shirt with an unacceptable image on the front, a large beer can labeled Pab's Blue Ribbon. Miss DeSoto was sent to the guidance counselor's office. She was given the option to turn her shirt inside out, change into a shirt from her gym locker, or be suspended for the rest of the day. Miss DeSoto chose suspension. Her father was called, but there was no answer and no answering machine. Miss DeSoto must return this form tomorrow, signed by her father. Hmm. get to that. Chun-Li moves. <laughs> Lightning kick. All right. Adventurous the cat returns. Let's turn that off. Oh yeah, man. A freaking... I was never really good at those when I was younger, but I think I'm a little better at them now. <laughs> stare? Let me just stare at it. I don't know. I don't know if I can actually get that. <laughs> what do we got here? Journey of Crystal. Super Spitfire. What do we got here? Hi Lonnie, I wrote this in first period and left it in your locker on the way to second. It's what all the cool kids are doing, I've decided. Write me back. Also, here's an idea for something to draw two cats on a motorcycle. Hey, this is a good idea. What all the cool kids are actually doing is sending each other pages on their beepers. But we're cooler than them because guess what? They can't put this on a beeper. Two cats on a motorcycle. Your drawing of cats was so good that I added a background to make it even better. Maybe I should just stick to writing though. <laughs> I like it. How did you know they were about to be abducted by aliens? I'm looking at Mr. Fish right now. I feel like he would probably have lots of cats. Also, like his secret shame is he watches 90210 religiously. I'll ask him about it after class. He said he doesn't have cats and also that he's never watched 90210, but I could see in his, li his eyes. He was lying. Markers all over the place. What's this? The brother 150 motorcycle. Examine magazine. Groove. Get some more light in here. Another groove magazine. Anything under the pillow? No. <laughs> Grab Steggy, Steli. Probably Steggy. Yeah, Steggy. I mean, it is some kind of like Stegosaurus kind of thing. I don't know what that is. Can I crouch again? Yeah, I can. Ah! Metalworking. C minus. Not a challenging assignment. Metal plaque for family portrait. Reasonable subject, but not complex. When I said that mom and dad should be replaced with parents' names, I did not mean just add them underneath. Acceptable leveling on edges. Show more pride in work. Alright. I want to believe. Combination. I don't know what that is yet. I don't think I've seen it. A lot of clothes all over the place, though. 
<laughs> Man, Sam had this in like fourth grade. Yeah. Rocking that Lisa Frank. Holy Bible. Yeah. Put that back. What is this? Collar. Oh, mitten. Oh no. Hmm. Board game. Got your number. I never played any of those kinds of games. Read chapter. The King's Labyrinth. Chapter 2. Fraying Threads. Captain Allegra, still in her flowing skirt and sturdy jerkin, descended the single shining thread into the lower cavern of the labyrinth. She and the first mate on their own now grew closer to their goal, the throne room of the dead immortal king of the island. The first mate slid down the line onto the stone floor. She swept chalky bone dust from the front of her canvas trousers and looked up at Allegra. The silken thread, nigh unbreakable thanks to the enchanted moths that inhabited the island, trailed behind, leading their way back to the entrance. From further onto the labyrinth, a moaning began to echo. The moaning grew louder and clearer. It turned into words from some ancient language they could not understand. The king's cursed voice. The hairs on Captain Allegra's arm stood on end. She looked back at the first mate, whose eyes remained locked on the blackness of the passage for a moment too long before noticing the captain's gaze. The first mate nodded silently ahead. Following the king's ghostly song deeper and deeper into the labyrinth, they came upon a rocky gap spilling forth otherworldly blue light. The great basin of the dead king's throne room lay below. Skeletal in rotted robes, the king was hunched over the blue orb, topping his royal scepter. Shadows of his bony fingers danced on the walls like ghouls. As he sang, wailing souls flowed in one by one through the cracks in the cave walls, pulled into the orb, causing it to go brighter and brighter. Behind the king, a long staircase, hewn from the rock, led down into the chamber from a passage at the top. Allegra said, We have the advantage in numbers. I will draw his attention, and then you... But the first mate interrupted, No, I am smaller and quicker, and you know of dealing with this mystic energies like these... I will circle to the other side, get the king's attention, and lead him on a merry chase. She held up the silk line. All traced by this invisible thread, of course, Allegra said. It is a good plan, but perhaps we should go together. The first mate shook her head. You know this is our best chance. Don't be afraid for me. They grasped hands and exchanged three tight squeezes, their palms growing warm. The first mate tied the shining thread to the belt of her trousers, gave a quick salute and a wink, and dashed off. Allegra waited, staring vigilantly across at the top of the stairs where the first mate was to appear. The king continued his, Wait, no, no, the singing stopped. The king turned and began walking up the stairs. Allegra wanted to call out, to do anything to stop the first mate from running headfirst into danger. She tried tugging on the line to signal her, no use. The king was nearly at the top of the stairs when the first mate burst through the passageway. She skidded to a stop. Even from across the yawning basin, Allegra could see the first mate's eyes grow wide. She turned and ran. Summoning his undead power, the king left the ground, levitating, gliding behind her with distressing speed. From some dank passage much too far away, Allegra heard the first mate scream. She was already running towards the sound. The line in Allegra's hand went taut, then shuddered. It fell slack to the stone floor. As Allegra ran, she was gathering line, twisting it around her arm. She came to its end. The unbreakable thread dangled limply, its end shredded and frayed in her hand. She tossed it to the ground and ran, ran, ran. S is for special, A is for adorable, M is for merry, A is for affectionate, N is for nice, T is for thoughtful, H is for honest, and A is for admirable. Anything on the back? No. Still no combination for the locker. Four digits is what I'm looking for. To keep an eye out. Haven't been in here yet. Oh, it's the hallway on the other side. Let's see what this is. Hey Sam, do you want to see Pulp Fiction after school at the Coliseum? It came out last weekend and Todd won't shut up about it, so either it's good or we can make fun of him for liking it. My mom's supposed to cook dinner for us tonight for a change, but I can just ditch out on it probably. What time? Also, isn't that movie supposed to be really violent? Am I going to barf? 
According to Todd, it is pretty hardcore. I guess Uma Thurman gets stabbed in the heart with a heroin needle, so that's kind of hilarious. Also, something about cheeseburgers is important. Todd wants to see it again. 7.15, okay? Don't barf. <laughs> Alright, see you then. Alright, come on. Um, dunk. I might have to come back for that combo. Pretty sure I've looked at everything, but we're gonna go around this way. Just so that we don't get lost. There's a lot of doors, a lot of drawers. Hey, at least I'm leaving it tidier than when I wait, wait. No? Okay. Just the edge of the pants there. Looked like there might be something. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, barf. Thank you. Grab mom's purse. And I can't actually, like, open it or look in it or anything, so. Postcard. Dear Mom, Dad, and Sam, I am in the Chunnel! This is my second passage through the Chunnel. I'm on my way back from London, this time going to Brussels, Belgium. Sorry I didn't write you on the way to London, but I was too excited about the Chunnel! London was great. Dad, I know you've always wanted to visit, and I think you really should. You'd love it. If you all wanted to come back here as a family sometime, I guess I could be convinced. Love you all! Katie. Anything else in here? Business card. Unknown dimension literature. Publisher. Hmm. Publisher that seems to do kind of like the kind of stuff my dad likes. Is there anything down here? No, just clothing. Why do people have clothing under the reds? That seems like a bad place for it. No machine. Hmm. Seems weird. Everything seems weird. Whoa. I thought I heard something. Ew. any of these. Can I open the cabinet since there's no mirrors? Hmm. Man, this is a nice bathroom. After the honeymoon, rediscovering your spouse personally, spiritually, and sexually. Hmm. Definitely having some marital issues. down here. Salmon bookmark. Timberline booksellers. Take your time. I'm glad to have it in good hands, Rick. Oh, okay. So I'm borrowing the book. Walt Whitman, Leaves of Grass. Collection of poems. From Rick. Whose side of the bed is this, anyways? Dear Jan, oh honey, let me tell you, I understand how you feel. Bob and I have had our down periods. It's become a bit of a way of life, actually. You get used to each other. You live your own lives in the same house. The kids grow up, they go away. I'm sorry, this isn't helping, is it? Don't worry. Terry will get over whatever's distracting him. Things will go back to normal. And as for Sam being distant, that's a teenager for you. Nothing to worry about. In the meantime, though, this controlled burn, that sounds like... Quite the adventure, but let's cut to the chase. This new ranger they sent. That's what I want to hear about. Ranger Rick? You have to be kidding me. It's too perfect. You have to tell me everything and send pictures. I want the whole package. Wait, that sounded wrong. Keep your chin up until Terry's out of his slump. And in the meantime, write more letters to your old friend Carol. She adores them. Alright, so we know which side of the bed this is. 
new photo. Hmm. Nothing on the back, huh? It's quite the bedroom, that's for sure. Oh, ghost game. Ghost mansion. Oh, it was already on. Just doesn't feel like it. Watercolor technique for florals and still alive. Did I already check the rest of this hallway? No, there's another door down there. We'll get to it. What's over here? Frickin' so many! Okay, we'll do this one first. If I could find the thing for the locker too, that would be nice. Alright, it's just a bathroom. That would be easy. No. I could flush the toilet. That's something for sure. Can't actually open it, but... Oh my god! Oh, okay, it's hair dye. Wild color! Red right hand. Semi-permanent hair color, not tested on animals. Lonnie brought her hair dye over today. She said, I need to fix these roots. Think you could help? Dying hair is weirdly intimate. I don't know if I've touched someone else's scalp before. It's pretty intimate, right? It felt intimate. We looked into the mirror together after, and I expected her to say something about how it looked crappy, or good, or whatever. But that's when she said, You're so beautiful. And she was looking at me. Right in that moment, I wanted to say something. But I waited. And the moment was gone. Hmm. Katie, Mom and Dad were going to make up for the going to make up the guest room for you to stay in over the summer, but you came home on such short notice that they weren't around to do it. You can use my room if you want. I won't be needing it anymore. Okay. Where'd she go? So this was supposed to be my room. Or the guest room. But for me to live in. It's a lot of boxes. Hey Sam, you were asking what my ribbons meant. This is a handy guide. Orienteering. This means the army thinks I can find my way around. Rifle team. The army has branded me as a certified killing machine. Adventure training. I'm a burn adventurous and no borders. Oh, born adventurous and no borders can hold me. The army recognizes this. So if you didn't think I was cool before, now you do. <laughs> What's this? Composition book. Ghost hunter journal. Sighting journal. August 31st. A tall shadow in the upstairs hall. When I rounded the corner, no one was there. How tall was Uncle Oscar? Note, I was not wearing my glasses. September 3rd. A faint voice coming from the bottom of the stairs. I said hello. Did not investigate. Probably was the furnace. September 9. Poured milk from carton in fridge. It was spoiled. Pretty sure I read that spirits can sour milk. Milk was just bought yesterday. October 9th. Lonnie says she feels a presence in the TV room. I suddenly begin to feel cold. We build a protective pillow fort. October 22nd. Lonnie and I employ Ouija board as a medium. Disturbing messages are conveyed from the other side. Oscar is definitely here. October 28th. Enlisted Lonnie to stay up all night and help patrol premises, recording any signs of otherworldly presence. Lonnie reported many sightings, but all remained unconfirmed. Possible ectoplasm in attic, probably due to leaky roof. Sample taken just in case. Despite our best efforts, we both fell asleep around 4 a.m. All in a, all in all, a successful night. 